Well, I'm back for finally getting to this video about the dreams. I've put it off for about a week now. I've just been dealing with some personal things and uh, glad to be back and, uh, you know, exposing some lies. Um, I'm going to be exposing a couple of uh, uh, dreamers, I guess you could say, near-death experiences. Uh, these things are demonic, okay? I've been taking care of some personal things lately, and uh, it's time to get back on. But, um, so, there's just this movement now going on uh, that people are getting these revelations from God, you know, and um, they're getting, they're, they're going to sleep, or they're having these near-death experiences about heaven or hell, and these new revelations, you know, that are not even in Scripture at all. And uh, that's why I kind of want to do this video and kick them, because um, we get our truth from the Word, okay? Not from dreams and near-death experiences, okay? It's not by experience, it's by the Word, okay? We are, uh, you know, we are Bible-believing Christians. We're not, <laughs> we're not dream-believing Christians, okay? There's no such thing. So, um, like I said, I'm happy to be back and you know, put this back on here. I've been dealing with a couple of heretics that are just making threats and stuff like that. I don't care what you have to say about me. You don't scare me, okay? I've dealt with plenty of false prophets already. Um, Levi Price and Stephen Anderson and a few others. You don't scare me, okay? Um, come on my channel and tell me to take it down. I don't think so, okay? Uh, you go ahead and keep bashing away, you little easy believism heretics. Um, you just keep bashing away, and uh, you're going to answer for it. It's all right. You know, telling people that you can live like the devil, and, and you can still be saved. I don't think so. Okay? Um, you know, just, th there's no change of life is what I mean. Like, they, they, they're going by this thing that, oh, it's just, it's just belief. It's just belief. You know, there's no change in their life uh, by the Holy Spirit. There's no transformation. There's no new birth. They don't believe in the new birth. They believe that... You're the same after you're saved. That's nonsense. You know, so I'm not going to get into that. That's a different topic, but this thing of dreams, okay? Um, <laughs> it's just, it, I'm seeing a lot of it now. And, um, and they'll take Acts chapter 2, verse 17 out of context where it says, you know, oh, well, let's just go there real quick and then I'll get into this in a minute. I'll get into the video here in just a second. Acts chapter 2, verse 17. I think it is. Okay. Yeah. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heavens above, and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire, vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood before the great and notable day of the Lord. So, who's this written to? Is this written to Christians? Nope. Um, this is before Jesus Christ comes back. Okay, this is talking about the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay, this stuff is not going on right now. All right? The thing of dreams and visions are not going to come until that time period because it says right here uh, where's that verse at right here oh, 19 it says I will show wonders in heaven above and signs who requires a sign the Jews 1 Corinthians 122 okay uh, for the Jews require a sign and the Greeks have to seek after wisdom okay the Jews require a sign you know Old Testament God gave the nation of Israel the Sabbath for a sign between him and thee. So, all right, so let's get into it. This, um, I'm going to be kicking this, um, this witch right here. She, uh, <laughs> she said some pretty heretical things, and, uh, I want to show you something that's just totally not scriptural at all, uh, especially for a new, for a new, uh, Christian, for, for a, somebody during the church age. Okay. Really surprised see me here to see that you are uh, that you um are sub subscribed to this man and and what you said to him 
that you agreed with him. This really shocked me because you say that you love the Lord, you love you love God, and but yet you're subscribed to somebody like him that all he does is mock and make fun of other people. Uh, no, he doesn't. I've actually seen his stuff before. Uh, Drew Bloom, uh, I've seen some of his videos. Uh, he's got some really good stuff. Um, he's not a he's not a mocker. You know, you'll have these things that these thing these people come out that they'll come out and say, "Well, you're too critical. You know, you have a critical spirit." We're supposed to try everything by the word. If it doesn't line up with the word, then you got to throw it out. So it's false. Okay, you know, David said, "I hate every false way." If it doesn't line up with the Bible, then you got to throw it out. Plain and simple. All right, let's continue. I want you to, to seriously take a look in the mirror and ask yourself, is this something that Jesus Christ would do? Is this something he would... Oh, 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 you know, Jesus is not sarcastic at all. Do we, do we need to go to Matthew 23? You know, woe to you, scribes, hypocrites, Pharisees. Do we need to go to that? Do Is this something that he would say, CBA, this is what I want you to do? And I know that you're going to find that the answer is no. And again, you're another person that I am truly praying for. And I'm really sorry um, that you got mixed up with this. I, and I'll Ooh. be honest, your last dream, I hope that people don't take what you said to heart because what you said is not true. People are, we all have different gifts. Uh -huh. My gift is the gift of dreams. I've been getting... Ooh. Her gift's the gift of dreams. Um, chapter and verse. Show me where Paul talked about the gift of dreams. Hmm? Show it to me. Can you show it to me? Of course not. Uh, if you're... <laughs> what does the Bible say about dreamers? Oh, let's see here. Jeremiah. There's plenty of verses, you know. What these little dream prophets will do, they'll just come out and they'll say, I had a dream, God showed me this, and you're supposed to believe it. If you don't believe it, you're a heretic, you know? Then the Lord said unto me, the prophets prophesy lies in my name. I sent them not, neither have I commanded them, neither spake unto them. They prophesy in, unto you a false vision and divination, and the thing of naught, and the deceit of their heart. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's the point of dreams? These people come out with these dreams. Well, I believe they're trying to overthrow the book, the authority of the book. Um, go back to Deuteronomy. Uh, I think it's thirteen, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, check this out. I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you this. All right. If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams, uh oh, and give it thee a sign of wonder. And, a, and the sign of wonder come to pass, okay? A prophet that gives a sign of wonder that does come to pass, all right? Whereof he spake unto thee, saying, Let us go after other gods, which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. You see it? You see how they can actually deceive people and to go out to follow something other than the book. You know, if you're not following the King James Bible, then it's another god, okay? It's the Antichrist spirit. And thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams. For the Lord your God proveth you to know whether ye love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul. So, again, <laughs> this thing of dreams. I mean, <laughs> show me anybody in the New Testament during the time of Paul that had the gift of dreams. I mean, show it to me. I mean, um, the, the Acts 2.17 prophecy is not going to come to pass until... The, the body of Christ is removed from the earth. All right. Um, that is before the great and notable day of the Lord. That's what it says. Time of Jacob's trouble. Okay. That's not right now. Okay. See, this is a liar. And I just want to kick this real quick and, uh, um, you know, put my two cents in this too, I guess you could say, you know, because apparently there's a war between these, between, uh, Drew Bloom and this woman, and, um, you know, it sounds to me like she's a false prophet. I mean, that's just, that's a heresy, okay? Nobody has a gift of dreams right now. All right, that's that's nonsense, okay? So, I'm going to move on to something else. Um, go to the uh, actual internet now. Um, I don't know why that's up there. Let's see, where's that? This one right here. Okay. 
And I'm not gonna do. I'm not gonna get into a lot of these, but this is one. This is a really popular one. I've been seeing a lot, and uh, somebody asked me to refute it. And uh, Christians that would end up in hell. Okay, first of all, no, there's no true born again Christians in hell. Um, it's a lie. But let me get it loaded up here. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna play like the first few minutes, and I'm gonna skip to some parts that are very heretical, and I'm gonna show you why they're wrong. Okay. Um. This is by this website called Divine Revelation, or whatever, and uh, they're all about dreams and visions. Go figure, you know, things that are contrary to his word. And a lot of these people, they're holiness Pentecostal types, and you're going to see that. You know, the whole blah, 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 speaking in tongues, gibberish. You know, tongues in the Bible is languages. It's not this special, you know, weird language you get. You're just jibber-jabbering and blah, blah, blah. You know, no, it's not what it is. So let's get into this. Christians that wound up in hell by Caramello Brennitz. In 1982, I had an accident in which I died. As death came over me, I felt everything become dark, and I found myself walking through a dark tunnel. So he died. So now you're alive. Huh? Uh huh. Sure. And there was some kind of being that was taking me. While we walked in this cold and dark tunnel, I began to hear horrific screams and moans. And an intense fear was growing inside of me. I knew that, although my body was already dead, I was somehow still alive in this place. I saw large snakes moving all around. Okay, so you get the idea. He died, and he went to he went to hell, basically. So I'm gonna skip a little bit forward right here. Um, I don't know why this thing's glitching on me. Get up with rope. Oops. This thing's not want to cooperate with me. Twenty-seven. Jesus also showed me a place with some kind of boiling oil and there were people suffering inside burning in the flames and trying to get out can you show me a chapter and verse for boiling oil in hell no hell is going to be fire and brimstone not boiling oil <laughs> uh, anyway. but demons would throw them back in we walk so demons are throwing people in fire and into boiling oil, apparently. Okay. Uh, nope. The uh, demons that are in hell are in chains of darkness. Okay. They are not tormenting people. There's no tormentors in hell. The only time there's the mention of tormentors in the Bible is in Matthew 18. And it's a reference to the kingdom of heaven, the physical earthly kingdom on the earth, when Jesus Christ is ruling and reigning with the saints. Okay. The thousand year reign. All right. There's no tormentors in hell. That is a lie. All right. When the. Fallen angels are going to get the judgment, the final judgment. They're going to have the same torment as any bum on the street, okay? Any drunken bum that's never accepted Jesus Christ, all right? They're going to have the same tor the same torment. They're not going to be tormenting people. This is this is not scriptural. Walked until we came to a place with people that had once listened to the word of God, but never wanted to repent. I even saw pastors, evangelists, believers, and missionaries. And they were all there for different reasons. I saw one pastor who never believed in the power of the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues, healing, or the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And he was begging for mercy and just one more chance to tell the world that tongues were real, that the Holy Ghost is real, and that there's real freedom in the gospel. Oh, so tongues are real. <laughs> well, if you know your Bible, you know what tongues are. Um, like I said, I'm going to go back to Acts chapter 2. Uh, this clove, this tongues of fire stuff that these Pentecostals like to, charismatic cuckoo birds like to talk about. Um, all right, I'm going to read this right quick. Acts chapter 2. And this is their favorite passage I like to go to, Acts chapter 2. All right, this is not for Christians today, okay? Uh, we are not... 
the, the sign gifts there, they went away later on in the book of Acts, and uh, uh, this is not for today. And the tongues that are mentioned in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 are just tongues that people are not familiar with, the unknown tongues. All the tongues here in Acts chapter 2 are familiar. They all know them, and you're going to see the language is actually listed. Tongues is means language, okay? All right, here we go. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come... They were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire. Okay, like as a fire, not fire. Okay, not tongues of fire. That's heresy. Okay, and it sat upon each of them, and they were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues, other tongues, other languages. Okay, not blah, 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 you know, gibberish, fast-talking garbage. All right, as the Spirit gave them utterance, um, and they were dwelling in Jerusalem, Jew Jews, devout men, and out of every ma nation under heaven. Now, when this was noise abroad, noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because they that every man heard them speak in his own language, hmm. and they were all amazed and marvelled, saying one to another, "Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how?" Here we, every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born. Language, people, language. This is not talking about this special thing that you get, and it's just like this jibber-jabber, and you can't understand what you're saying. You don't even know what you're saying yourself. These people don't even know what they're saying themselves. These charismatic types that have this special gift or whatever, and they say, blah, 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 you know, these, whatever, I don't even know. This mata bota bota <laughs> you know, whatever. It's just it's stupid nonsense, okay? It's flesh. Uh, if they're saved, then they're speaking through their flesh. Just making up, trying to sound like there's some kind of, you know, like some kind of special gift. It's a bunch of garbage is what it is. All right. It says right here, here's the languages. Parthians, uh, Medes, I, don't, I guess that's how you say that, Elamites, and the dwellers in Mesopotamia, in Judah, in Cappadocia, and Pontus in Asia. I don't know how to pronounce all these, so bear with me. Okay. Fire, Phrygia. Fyri Pamphylia in Egypt and the parts of Libya about Cyrene and the strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes. Okay. Cretes, Anabrians, Arabians, I'm sorry. We do hear them speak in our tongues of wonderful works of God. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meanest this? Others mocking said, These men are full of new wine. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken unto my words. For these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is which they which has spoken by the prophet Joel. Hmm. You know, and it gets into the whole thing about dreams and visions. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I'm going to get down here. And it says right here, verse 22, it says, Ye men of Israel, hear these words, Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles, wonders, and signs okay which god did by him in the midst of you as you yourselves also know okay the the true gospel of jesus christ was not revealed later on okay so they were still going along with that same system that john the baptist was still preaching and stuff like that and then you have this new thing with the holy ghost and this and these languages all right the sign gifts for the jews okay trying to still point them to jesus christ Okay, as their Messiah. All right, that's all that's going on here. It's not this special thing. This, this, what this video is talking about is this Pentecostal charismatic nonsense. Okay, and you're gonna say that this that these Pentecostal charismatic people are the holiness types that teach that you sin a little bit, you're not gonna make it into heaven. It's works based salvation is what it is. Okay, let's continue. But it was too late for him. He could never get out. Okay, let's skip forward just a little bit. I don't want to waste too much time on this garbage because it's just, some of this stuff is just like so vexing. That, let, me, let me go full screen because it's not working. Okay. No, that's not where I want it. Right there. So we came to a place that was similar to some type of stadium. And there were demons all around, and they were laughing at the lost souls. They were mocking them, 
and tormenting those who are made in God's image. Completely unscriptural, okay? The demons are going to have the same part, and they're not these weird creatures, okay? Demons are fallen angels, the sons of God, more than likely. Um, the third part of the angels that fell with Satan, okay? They're not these weird creatures with horns and whatever, you know? It's, it's just... I think these people are tripping acid is what it is that when they have these dreams and visions or something because, I mean, <laughs> the demons are not, they don't look like that, okay? They're not these weird creatures like this right here. Continue. The demons would tear off parts of the people and hide them, making the people search all around for it. Demons were getting sadistic pleasure by inflicting pain. Uh -huh. As it is written, the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. You see how they twist scripture? Okay. That's talking about when you're alive on the earth. Okay. <laughs> Stupid nonsense. I mean, it's just... Whatever. John 10.10 10. The people there desperately thirst for water. But there is none. They regret even the day that they were born. But the worst feeling is for those who knew Jesus, but then walked away from him. Uh-oh. Uh, you mean works? Die in a state of grace? Is that what you mean? Okay. If you are truly born again, you're not going to walk away from Jesus. Okay. And even if you did, what would happen? Well, I'll show you. Even if you decided, well... You know, I'm just going to put my faith off, you know, or whatever. What what would happen? Well, I'll show you. <sighs> okay. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 11. It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. See right there? But it says right here, he'll deny us. No. He'll deny you rewards. He'll deny you crowns. Because right here, the next verse says, If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. You see? He's not going to deny you because you're born in a part of his body. See, these Pentecostal charismatics don't believe in imputed righteousness. They believe in self-righteousness. Okay? That you've got to do these wonderful works and all this stuff, so... Let's get back to the video. Uh, well, actually, I think I'm done with this one. Um, I'm going to show you one more uh, cuckoo bird real quick. Um, you know, another thing, too, I want to say is that if you if you got to the point where you're just like, I just don't know, I just, you know, I just don't know anymore. You start quitting on God or whatever. What's going to happen? Well, I mean, there's passages about, you know, being turned over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh. Okay. God will actually take you home. Um, you're not going to get away with it, okay? You might be born into his body, but you're not going to get away with it on the earth. Um, and when you go to the heaven, you're not going to receive much. And people th people just like to downplay that a lot, too. They'll, they'll downplay the thought of rewards in heaven and your place in heaven and stuff like that. They think that everybody that gets saved gets all the same blessings and stuff like that. Not true, okay? You have the same salvation, sure. But there are certain types of rewards and crowns that you can get um uh in heaven and uh so when you go to the judgment seat of Christ okay your works going to be tried not you you're not going to be tried but your works are going to be tried for the lord what you have done your service okay do you really want to go through heaven do you really want to go through eternity and be that one person that quit on the lord <laughs> you know and not have much I mean, is that really how you want to be? I mean, that's what I tell everybody. It's not about you losing your salvation because you can't in this time period. You can't lose your salvation during the church age. It's not possible, okay, because you're born in part of his body. All your sins are paid for, okay? Even if a Christian decides to go back and be carnal or whatever, they're going to be taken home pr pretty early, okay? That's biblical, okay? All right. All right, here's this witch right here. This, uh... Mary Baxter. I don't have time to go through a video because it's just like over two hours long and I just don't have time to do all that. So I just want to show you how um, stupid her view of Jesus is and 
read you some of the things in here. I mean, it's just like, I think some of these people are just, these people are Satanists, you know, and these, they're atheists. And they're coming up with these weird stories and trying to make a dollar. I think that's what it boils down to. And they're keeping people bound. She's against eternal security. Go figure. It's about your works. Okay. It's not about your works. Okay. It's about the blood of Jesus and what he did on the cross. All right. God saved us. So how can you lose something that God saved you from? You know, how can you lose salvation when God saves you? Stupid, you know. All right. Divine Revelation of Hell by Mary Kay Baxter. Oh, you know. Here the witnesses test eyewitness testimony on the true existence of hell, Mary Catherine Baxter, who was chosen by God to let the world know of the reality of hell. Jesus Christ appeared to Mary Baxter on 40 consecutive nights. Really? <laughs> it took Mary on a tour of hell and heaven. Hmm. It's kind of funny because doesn't Satan appear as an angel of light? Hmm. Something to think about. Can Satan appear to people? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. You know? And uh, what, what does Satan want? Uh, he wants people to get away from the gospel. Either... either a simple prayer, just pray this prayer, or you got to do all these things and be saved. You know, you got to live a holy, righteous life. Okay, whatever. She walked with Jesus through the horrors of hell and talked with many people. Jesus showed her what happens to the souls when they died and what happens to the unbelievers and servants of God who do not obey their calling. You see, works. Okay. And there's all our videos and stuff like that. I don't have time to go through them. There are too many of them. But um, Let's see here. Where is that? Uh, false religion. Actually, you know what? Let me click on the link real quick. I just kind of want to show you how nutty this Jesus is of hers. You know? False religion. Okay. All right. The Lord said, if the people of the earth will listen to me and repent of their sins, I will hold back the workings of the Antichrist and the beast till there comes a time of refreshing. Huh? Didn't the people of Nineveh repent at the preaching of Jonah? I am the same yesterday, today, before. Repent, and I will send a time of blessing. Then I heard Jesus say, my people should love one another and help one another. They must hate sin and love the sinner. Completely unscriptural. By the way, by this love shall all men know that ye are my disciples. As Jesus spoke, the earth opened and we were back in hell. And I saw a hillside filled with dead tree trunks. And all around was gray dirt. I saw also small pits in the side of the hill and the gray forms of people walking and talking. I followed Jesus on a very crooked, dirty trail and led up the side of the gray hill. As we drew nearer, I saw the people were whole but dead. They were composed of gray, dead flesh, and they were bound together with a rope of bondage, uh, a kind of cord of gray matter that wound around and around, wound around, sorry, and all the people on the hill. While there was no fire in sight, I knew that this was a sight, this was a part of hell, for dead flesh fell from the bones of the people that, people there, and then grew back really fast. Death was everywhere. People, but the people did not seem to notice they were deeply engrossed in conversation. Jesus said, let's listen to what they were saying. One man said to another, did you hear about this man, Jesus, who came to take away sin? Um, another responded, I know Jesus, he washed my sins away. In fact, I don't know what, what I'm doing here. Nor do I, said the first man. Another said, I tried to witness to my neighbor about Jesus, but he wouldn't listen. When his wife died, he came to me to borrow the money for his funeral. But I remember that Jesus had said we should be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. So I turned him away. I knew he would not He would send, mo send the money for something else anyway. We have to be good stewards for our money, you know. Huh. The first man who had spoken now spoke again. Yes, brother, he said, a boy at our church needed clothes and shoes, but his father drinks, so I refused to buy anything for his son, we really taught that man a lesson. Well, said another man, as he held the rope of bondage in his hand, twisting it all about him nervously, we must always teach ourselves to live like Jesus. 
That man had no right to drink. Let him suffer. Jesus said, O foolish people of slow heart, awaken to the truth and love one another in fervent love. Help the helpless, give to those in need without any thought of getting anything in return. If you if you will repent, O earth, I will bless you and not curse you. Awaken your sleep and come to me and humble yourselves and bow your hearts before me and I will come and live with you and you will be my people and I will be your God. It's very confusing. I mean, um, uh, this, you know, God's not the author of confusion. I mean, none of that stuff even made sense. And, uh, you know, she goes to heaven right here, of course, and uh, it says, Jesus would say, peace be still, and peace would flood my soul. But a few minutes later, I would wake up screaming, hysterical with fear. Um, it's just like... <laughs> I just think these people just come out and say this stuff. They're just they're Satanists or whatever, and um, they don't actually read what the word says. And let's see here. I'm trying to find that spot. I don't remember. Um. But I'm trying to find that spot of you know like let me go back up real quick. I thought it was in the false religion, but I guess it wasn't. I apologize for that. Let's see here. Closing words. Maybe it was in this. I don't know. I was. I wish to assure you again that the things you have read in this book are true. Hell is a real place of burning torment. But I also like to tell you that heaven is equally real and can be your home for eternity. As God's handmaiden, oh my gosh, here we go. I have yielded your, I have yielded myself to the, to the leading of the Lord Jesus Christ, and He had faithfully recorded those things, which He has shown me and told me. For best results, you should read the this book along with your Bible and balance what is written here with the Holy Scriptures. It's kind of funny because, um, it's kind of funny because it totally contradicts the Bible. If you actually read the whole thing, um. Let me go up here. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Um, yeah, I know I'm kind of jumping all over the place, but I'm just trying to remember. What, I had that really good point, and I just totally for, forgot where it was. So, The angel of the Lord came by my bed. It had rainbow wings about 12 foot high, and it had a white garment on. And over to the, the left of this angel, kind of behind him, stood Jesus. And he was on the right of Jesus. And uh, Jesus smiled. Uh, <laughs> rainbow wings? Did you hear that? I mean, show me any angel in the Bible that had wings. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, the wing, the Bible, the, the angels in the Bible did not have wings. Okay. They look like men. If you read about Sodom and Gomorrah, the two angels... They were like men. I mean, let's let's go there real quick. Um, so I can kind of prove my point here. Okay. Uh, Genesis 19. Let's see here. I'm trying to remember where it was. This is right here. It says, and they call unto Lot and said unto them, Where are the men which came into thee this night and bring them out unto us that we may know them? Okay, they were angels. Okay, they were not men. There, two, there came two angels to Sodom at even, and Lot sat in the gate of Sodom, and Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them. He bowed himself with his face toward the ground. Angels look like men. They're men. Okay, they don't have wings. Okay, they look just like men. Even in Hebrew, it says there are some people that entertain angels unaware. Uh, this woman doesn't know what she's talking about, but let's see here. We'll speak to him like uh, fires or, or expressions. It's a Bible. It said, I even, he, I, even I am he that blotteth out all your old transgressions. And then these pages become crimson red. And then they take your book, and they record in your book 
the minute you got saved, the sermon you heard, they record everything that God did. And they close the book up and they take this before the book of the throne of God. Oh, see it right there? Run from our sin? Can't even spell it. Do not believe in a satanic doctrine called one save all say. Walk work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Oh my gosh, here we go. You know. Uh, what a wing nut. I mean, right there it tells you right there she's false. I mean I mean how many times I gotta do this over and over again, you know. These people that come out and say that one saved always saves a heresy, you know. Well, let's see what Paul had to say about that. I guess Paul is a heretic then. I guess he's a satanic, you know. In whom ye have also trusted, after that ye have heard the word of the truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance unto the redemption of the purchased possession, unto the praise of his glory. <sighs> Ephesians 4.30. I mean, I can do this all day, people. Um, I've studied the, the issue of eternal security. I mean, it is a Bible doctrine for the church age. Okay, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. There's nothing you can do to merit your salvation. Jesus paid it all on the cross. Okay, um, let me go right here. And I apologize. I'm not. I think I'm getting sick or something. Uh, been having a raspy voice all morning. Uh, verse nine. Check this out. You know, let me go to verse eight. Be thou, be not thou, therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord. Nor am me his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God, who had saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, okay, but according to his own purpose and grace, which has given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Okay, he saved us, all right? We didn't save ourselves, okay? Titus 3 5 says, Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but According to his you know, mercy and grace, he saved us. Okay? He saved us. We didn't save ourselves. Um, these people coming out now, they're basically attacking. You deny eternal security in this time period. You're denying the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. It's sufficient to pay for your sins. Uh, so really, who's the satanic people? Who's the ones that are preaching satanic heresy? Doctrines of devils. That you've got to work your own salvation. You know, what a bunch of nonsense. What a bunch of Catholic nonsense. Okay? You're born in a part of the body of Christ. You're not going to lose your salvation. Give me a break. Don't fall for that. Uh, Jesus Christ's grace is sufficient for thee. Okay? 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Don't fall for that. All right? So, that's going to be it. Don't fall for dreams. They're a bunch of garbage. Okay? If they don't line up with Scripture, throw them out. Okay? Um, and I apologize. I'm not really feeling all that great right now. And uh, I'm kind of like out of it a little bit but i really needed to put this together and kind of make a point about it so that's going to be it god bless everybody